Hey everyone, Lizelle Crowley here at the Cool Tool Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really fun ring using a combination of an antique mold, cubic zirconia, and a texture tile. This is the ring we're going to make today. It uses a really cool swirl antique mold with a cubic zirconia set in the middle and a fun undulating texture tile for the band. Let's get started. So these are the tools we're going to use for today's project. We're going to work with Easy 960 Sterling Silver Clay. This is the best clay for rings. It's got fabulous finish strength and it's a wonderful creamy clay to work with. We're going to use this texture called Borders and Silhouettes for the ring band. And we're going to use an antique mold that's in a floral motif for the focal on the ring and we're going to set a cubic zirconia in the center. These are just some examples of the antique molds you can use but there's many 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 molds to choose from. I will likely use this one in today's project. And this is a four millimeter um, violet CZ. You want to make sure that the cubic zirconia you use can be fired to the temperature of EZ960. And there's a wonderful chart on the Cool Tools website that will um, give you that information. Because we're setting a stone, we're going to use a biopsy punch. This one is a three millimeter for the four millimeter uh, gemstone. We're going to use these wonderful new silicone ring mandrels. These are fabulous because you don't have to put any paper on them. You don't even have to lubricate them. You can form the ring right on there and it will slip off perfectly once it's dried. And we can also use a stand for the ring mandrel. We're going to need water and brush, a hydrator to keep the clay moist while we're working, thickness frames, lubricant we're using Cool Slip, a brush to brush the lube onto the texture, coil roller, clay pick, and tweezers. Um, and just to let you know that the um, ring mandrels come in half sizes and full sizes. You can buy them in sets or you can buy half sizes individually, full sizes individually, with or without the stand. So you can mix and match as you desire. They're a wonderful, wonderful tool for making rings. Um, we're also going to be working on a clay board and this is my favorite work surface for metal clay. It's a wonderful nonstick surface and it also has four non-skid feet so it gives me a stable working surface wherever I am. It gives me a nice level working surface wherever I am. Let's get started. So the first thing to consider whenever you're making a ring is sizing. You have to allow for the shrinkage of the clay. Easy 960 shrinks 10 to 12 percent uh, and I find that for a delicate ring I can go up two sizes but for a wider band I like to go up three sizes so for this ring we're going to go up three sizes. I'm going to make a size 7 ring so I'm going to use my size 10 ring mandrel and again these mandrels come in um, full sizes and half sizes so if you have to end up in a half size you can use the um, say you wanted a seven and a half you would use the ten and a half mandrel. So I have my mandrel ready. I'm going to um, create the band first and I'm using this beautiful texture called Borders and Silhouettes and I can use any of these to make the band and what I really love about this is the wavy line of it. I tend to like organic designs so I'm going to actually roll the clay out and then cut out my ring band. I'm going to start by rolling the clay four cards thick and I just need a strip obviously because I'm making a ring band. So what I typically will do is start by rolling a, a coil, a thick coil. And then I'll start rolling it out with my rolling pin. And that just helps me get started on having a nice long narrow strip. And again I'm rolling this four cards thick. And I'll take my texture which has already been lubricated and I'm going to decide which of these um, motifs I want for my ring band and I really like this one here. So I'm going to lay my clay over that and I'm going to use a two card guide. 
And for this, I'm going to roll in one direction with a firm, even pressure. See how much fun that is? Now for this, I am going to cut the design out with my needle tool because I want to follow the line of the texture. So I'm just kind of using the texture as my guide. And when you cut with your pick on your um, clay board, you want to make sure you're gliding it over the surface. You want, don't want to drag it or scratch the clay board. If you cut too, if you press too hard, you run the risk of scratching your surface and you also, uh, sometimes the needle tool will vibrate and create a ragged line. I'm just going to trim some of this off right here. And now I'm going to take my size 10 ring mandrel. And just wrap this around it. And notice I'm not using any lube. I'm going to take my little scraper and trim. I'm just picking an area where it's somewhat even. I'm going to trim right here. I'm going to remove the top and the bottom. And moisten where that bevel cut is. And you can get you can get water on this mandrel and it it's not an issue. Your clay is still going to release beautifully once it's dry. So all I'm doing is aligning those up and pushing them together to make sure that they bond. And I'd like to be a little bit loose on the mandrel. So now that I have gotten the band formed, I'm going to put the mandrel on the stand. So this allows me to work with two hands. I'm going to set this aside as I make my central motif for the ring. So I'm going to take a little ball of clay and I'm going to there's many ways I like to use use molds uh, sometimes if a mold is really concave I'll use a domed surface to push the clay into the mold but this one isn't that concave so I'm going to make a little patty with my needle with my coil roller and then press and this should give me a nice impression Now this is fairly thick, so um, I think I want to make it a little thinner. So I'm going to take about a third of the clay that I used and do the exact same process again. Because I don't want, I want the motif to have some substance to it, but I don't want it to be too thick. Um, my clay is a little on the dry side, and this is a good point for um, working with any kind of clay. If it starts to get dry and it's not going to give you the um, results that you want, it's always worth it to take a moment to reconstitute. And I just want to show you how easy it is to reconstitute this clay. I'm doing a light spritz of water and rolling the clay up and rolling it out again. And I'm going to roll it two or three times to just incorporate that water. And you see, I'm not even using plastic wrap. As long as I'm not overly um, generous with the water, I can reconstitute it that easily. And now it's nice and moist, so I'm ready to go. So again, I'm going to take a little ball of the clay, a smaller ball than I used the first time. Roll it into a ball. Flatten it into a patty. Get it in there, and then in this case, I'm going to flatten it with my fingers so that it gets into all the nooks and crannies of the design. I want a really good, clear impression. And then I'll pop that right out. Now, you could also dry this in the mold 
and then pop it out but I want to set a stone in it so I want it to still be fairly moist. So this is going to be the central motif on my ring and I'm going to place it right over the seam which will cover the seam. So I'm going to wet the back of this place it right on there and I like to wiggle it until it grabs okay and now I'm going to take my biopsy punch and cut that hole right in the middle of the flower there and I always like to twist the biopsy punch when I cut a hole very often that will help bring the clay out and now I can take my cubic zirconia. Now because of the layers of the ring band and the, the, the top motif, this should be deep enough for my cubic zirconia to go right in there. And I'm going to press that down with my coil roller and that fits right in the center. So that ring is now ready to set aside to dry and then all we have to do is give it a light sanding and fire it and we'll have a beautiful finished ring. So here we have the finished ring. It's been fired, brushed, polished, and brought to a satin, and patinaed and brought to a satin finish. It fits really well. I'm a size seven and I made it to be a size seven. And I've made another ring using a great antique mold called Carved Marquee. And for this, I chose to do a smooth band. And I've wrapped the, um, the piece made out of the mold completely around the front of the ring and also set a cubic zirconia in the center. And again, you can mix and match these texture tiles and antique molds and cubic zirconias to your heart's content. I hope you enjoy making these rings. Thank you for watching. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.